let's do a review of our solubility rules. Some people like using a table, which is fine, where you look at your cation and anion and find where they intersect, and that'll tell you if it's soluble or not. Those work for the most part, but I find uh, it's generally easier to remember three simple rules. We will assume an ionic compound is soluble if any of the following three rules is true. Rule number one, sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, ammonium, acetate, or nitrate is present. If any of those ions is part of your ionic compound, it will be soluble, no matter what else you've got. Silver nitrate, soluble. Potassium carbonate, soluble. Lithium sulfite, soluble. Sodium bromide, soluble. Ammonium acetate, soluble. Anything that has at least one of these will always be soluble. No exceptions. Say that, but for us, no exceptions. Option two. Say we don't have any of those things. If we have a halide present, represented by X here, where X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. If you have one of those halide ions, say a chloride ion, your substance should be soluble. Cobalt 2 chloride, soluble. Iron 3 chloride, soluble. Calcium bromide, soluble. Sodium iodide soluble, but that's also part of rule one. So either of them can work for that. There are exceptions. Silver halides, lead two halides, and mercury one halides are all insoluble. So silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, all insoluble. However, silver nitrate or silver acetate would certainly be soluble. Our third criterion, again, any of these can work. It doesn't have to be all of them. It could be any of them. If you have sulfate present, you will generally be soluble. Iron 3 sulfate, potassium sulfate, rubidium sulfate, ammonium sulfate, cobalt 2 sulfate, all soluble, right? Sulfate makes things soluble unless... You are calcium sulfate, barium sulfate, strontium sulfate, or any of those same exceptions from the last row. So silver, lead 2, and mercury 1. All of those sulfates are insoluble. I'm going to write that in red because I forgot to. These are all insoluble. Here. Anything that's not present here is most likely insoluble. For example, if you see magnesium carbonate, we have no idea. It's not covered by any of these. It's not anything from rule one. We don't have any of those ions. We don't have a halide, and we don't have sulfate. So it's going to be insoluble. That will be our rule. All right, some places might say things are slightly soluble, and blah, blah, blah. Let's not worry about that. If it's not covered by one of these three rules, assume it is insoluble. All right, so we're going to see that this is going to be very important in predicting the products of reactants. Uh, because when things come together, when we have various electrolyte solutions coming together, we may form insoluble compounds. And that'll be the next video. But first, let's take a look at what's actually happening uh, with some of these ions. We see that, for example, calcium chloride, do we expect this to be soluble? Pause the video. Hopefully, you now unpaused it and found, yes, indeed, calcium chloride should be soluble because of that second rule. It is a halide there, so chlorine tends to make things soluble. It's not one of the exceptions for chlorine, so it is soluble. If we want to think of what's actually happening, this is really better represented as having calcium ions and chloride ions present. Notice that we have two chloride ions. Right, We have that calcium 
one calcium and two chlorines. Each chlorine has a negative one charge. And so we represent that with a coefficient of two. So this breaks apart into three particles, one calcium ion and two chloride ions. If we have something like uh, aluminum nitrate, that's going to break into the aluminum ion. This should be soluble, by the way, because it has a nitrate in it. And we have three nitrate ions here. So we'll expect all of these two to form nice uh, solutions uh, where we're going to have nice electrolytes. These are all soluble. Um, however, if we have something like strontium sulfate, we can say, this does not break apart into its ions. Notice, by the way, as well, we're always keeping our polyatomic ions together. Nitrate stays as nitrate. Sulfate stays as sulfate. We don't ever mix those up uh, until next semester when we start doing electric uh, electron electrochemistry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so even though this one doesn't dissolve, if it were something that did dissolve, say lithium sulfate, that would dissolve into two lithium ions and the sulfate ion. So uh, it's important that we keep those polyatomic ions together. This is a solid compound, which we indicate with S. Uh, so it does not break apart into our ions to any great extent. All right, so uh, we're not going to see that happening. So it's very important that you get good practice on taking a look at compounds and identifying what ions will be present in solution. Because in our next uh, section, we're going to take a look at what happens when certain mixtures of ions come together.